Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We're gonna take a spin around a whole bunch of things today. One on the calendar, it says happy everything. And of course, this is what? Thursday? Uh, so yes, I do have a happy everything today. Also, I forgot from yesterday, it was popcorn day. International World Popcorn Day. So popcorn is a lot easier to make now that we have microwaves. How many of you were making popcorn before microwaves with the little jiffy pop things or yeah, they had like the air poppers. Those were big. I think the microwaves were out then too. But yeah, uh, offices was where I really got into popcorn. Maybe a bit in college, but mostly when I was in an office because they would have the popcorn in the vending machines. <laughs> And so the offices would smell in the afternoon just like heaven. That's what my one boss said. He goes, heaven must smell like popcorn. So as he go tro basically trolling around the department to eat all of our popcorn because he didn't buy his own. <laughs> but I always love that phrase. Heaven must smell like popcorn. All righty. First, let's do a little tour of what I have gotten done. So my list my list. I now have the miters on here. So they turned out pretty good. Three of them matched up really well. And just like I thought the fourth one, it, you know, it should have matched up as well, but it didn't. Uh, it's a little off, but that's okay. I am going to back this. It would be lovely to go buy fabric to back it with because this comes in flannel now and that would be super cool but I'm not going to do that because I have a bunch of fabric so I am going to use my Harmony in this hunter green so here's the Harmony these are wide backs which makes it so lovely I just have to do you know one cut or two cuts uh, for this size and the green just matches the ferns that are in all of the center blocks so I thought that was really cool so it brings that color in now I'm probably going to bind this maybe in this black because I think I have enough of that black with the little peppermints and stuff. So I think I'll bind it in that. Okay, so that will be, once I have that, then that will go to the spa. So I'm, I'm not going to mess with it because I'm on a mission to sort of close these things out. This one, have, remember it's been sitting forever in my basket and I just got it out to finish it because it was so close to being done. Okay, so I've got that one, uh, the crochet scarf. Last night, my friends and I were all on a Zoom together because a lot of them live in other states now. And I, I was crocheting on the Shaw and I will link you down to where you can purchase the pattern. And there's also a video for the pattern. I'll link you to that in the description box below. But now I have only this much yarn left. So I did put that purple on again. I'm like, what the heck, let's do it. And I've got only this much. I don't know, that should, I should finish it today. So that'll be done. And this is the yarn that I used. I linked that down there too. So the yarn, and there was the little color, color code on it. So I'm pretty happy. So that'll, that means I just have the spooky sampler, organizing my cross stitch, and the Montana mittens, and the monthly markings to try to get them all done by the end of the month. The monthly markings is going to take me a little bit longer because I've not really blocked a, um, a cross stitch in to put on a frame before. So I'm leaving that till last and I will do the cross stitch and the mittens and the binding for sure by the end of the month, because all of these, like I said, are just probably one evening things. And I have that many evenings. I have four evenings before the end of the year. So I can do it. I can do it. Okay, let's take a look at some happy everything completions. Some of them you might still be putting borders on, but you got the main part of them all done. And I want to show everybody because I'd like to encourage you, if you see these, to get yours finished as well. Uh, don't let it become a UFO. Be sure it gets into a quilt. So let's see. Let's go through and see what we have. First up is Bonnie's, and she has just such pretty colors. I just really love the colors. These are just randomly picked over the last probably week as people were sharing things. Cheryl's has tons of color, and they remind me of 30s fabric. So I'm not sure, Cheryl, if you use 30s fabric on it, but I love that big pop of purple in there. That is so cool. 
So Cindy is auditioning where she's showing the border that she's going to add to it. And I really love how her color palette is and that blue border that she's auditioning. If you use that, it looks fabulous. Denise's is on black. Oh my goodness. Pop, pop, pop. That black is just fabulous. Uh, looks like it's mostly K facet fabrics, which are real jewel tones. She used the jewel tones versions of his mostly. Okay, next up is our half pint. Waving to you, half pint. She's always here, uh, friendly in the chat in the mornings. Uh, I just really love that you switched out my other pumpkin for the piece pumpkin. You did the applique one, and I know that you've been practicing your applique, and it looks fantastic. Let's see, Jennifer's has really a lot of just wow color. I mean, this is a knock your socks off quilt. And note in the background, she has blue, green, and yellow backgrounds, and how effective that is. It just holds together so well. So for those of you who've been maybe a little nervous about using that much intense color, look how fabulous this turns out. Judy's is all sort of warm and cozy colors. I just love it. That would be great with a flannel backing on it. Now Julie's gives me all the feels. <laughs> It's done with my Bonnie Lane fabric. And Bonnie Lane fabric is my Benertex fabric that I named for my mom. And it's just so pretty. Lucia has another black background and hers has all fall colors on it. So it is just so cozy. I love seeing that difference of the jewel tones and then the fall colors. Okay, Sarah's has that zigzag behind the pumpkin. Ah love that. I mean, that's the kind of thing where I see that zigzag fabric and I want to go out and find zigzag fabric now. That's, I may have some here somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but she also has a warm, cozy feel to hers. Okay, just a couple more. Sharon's is done in these beautiful light pinks and light grays. That is just so gorgeous. It's so soft. It's beautiful. Uh, and Vivian. Vivian's is so happy. She has a lot of different colors. So for those of you who like using a lot of colors, this is a fabulous example. Plus she put a cake in there. Ah, gotta, gotta love that. That rolls right into sweet dreams, right? <laughs> From happy everything. Good, you gotta have a cake, right? You gotta celebrate these things with a cake. Ah, so cool. You guys did fabulous. You just did fabulous. I love it. Okay, so I've been looking at a few of the things on my shelves and f uh, taking photos and whatnot. So I thought I would show you a couple. The other day when we were talking about getting your quilts quilted and one of the stumbling blocks is uh, actually teaching yourself to free motion if you want a free motion or just getting better used to your walking foot is to do panels. So in my, uh, it's an out of print book, but you can still get copies. You can still get a digital copy and I've linked you down below. My novelty book, my novelty print book, um, it's called What a Novel Idea. I have in there how you can use a panel to, uh, you know, th that book has how to take a panel and increase the size of it. And that's what this quilt is from. My machine quilting book tells you about quilting the panel, but this, my novelty print, tells you like a little formula for how to add this kind of a border on any kind of panel. So you have to do a little bit of math, a little graph paper, but it's all very doable. But I thought I'd show it to you. So here's some of the quilting. So there's like bubbles in here. There's kind of like little uh, vine with leaves on either side and scroll work. Uh, I'm looking at this from the back, so hopefully you can see it. Like his beard, I've you know outlined in the beard to give him some definition, and you can see all the way around. So that is just a fun way to take and practice because your panel has all this on it that you can see and you can work around it. Okay, so another quilt that I had, which is just a fun one, I thought in kind of double-sided this. I don't even know. I have to look up where it's from. I think it was in one of my books as a, another example, but I'm not sure it actually made it into the book. Uh, so here's just a little, a little easy quilt that showcases fabric basically. So it'll be, you know, taking like a layer cake and 
splitting it in half with this insert. But this would also be great for your scraps. So if you did scraps, you could either, they were really skinny ones, you could just put them as the insert, or if you had big chunks, you could do them on either side and then split it and then rotate the blocks. It's just, and it's a fun size then that you could practice on for your machine quilting. So it's a nice little kid size or hospice. The hospice um, use these a lot to put for people for a wheelchair for lap quilts. So this kind of small size is used and you can talk to your local hospice or um, maybe rehab center that might need that kind of a thing. That's where some of my quilts this size go when Susan, my friend Susan, takes them. Okay, the last uh, quilt from the trunk is one that I made many years ago. When did I make it? 1997 and this was done with scraps so I was making basically half square triangles with scraps all lights on one side all greens on the other and then I did some applique some little coffee cups on the other side of it it's got kind of an asymmetrical look to it because it goes out into the border and here's the back of this one so I was using up some things and then I did kind of a grid wave on it, just real basic. Whoops, you can see it on the white. You can see it on the white there, I think. That's the quilting I did on it. There's also some other quilting. There's, oh, that doesn't have the wave part. Where is that? I've got a whole bunch of different kind of quilting. Oh, it's in the center. Sorry about that. <laughs> there you can see it. I have different quilting on there. I didn't realize that. This I use for, um, well, it was, I made it for myself in 97, but then I, I later used it for some of my teaching when I did a lot of scrap kind of quilt classes with that uh, style of using them up. <sighs> so those are just a couple that I thought I'd share with you because they kind of show you different things that you can be doing with your, uh, with your stuff. Okay, I also have another quilt to show you today because I've been saving this one. So let's get it up here. This is from Joyce. She took the block 10 from Summer Soiree, which was those little triangles, which I thought I gave you a layout to do it as a full quilt. And so Joyce did that. She used up scraps um, and light background and has this, they look like confetti to me. It's like, ah, oh, now I want to make that too as a big quilt. <laughs> it looks fabulous. Okay, I have a, uh, an advice column today. <laughs> See, I told you a lot of different stuff. So I had an advice column today, and this is from Cheryl. And so she said, she said, this is a serious question. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, it's about fabric. So of course it's serious to quilters. Um, she goes, how much extra fabric do you feel a quilter should keep on hand? I really don't have room for a, for a lot in my home. Um, so that is an interesting question, particularly if you are fairly new to quilting, you might, um, you know, not know exactly how much you should have. So there's a, the, Cheryl, the spectrum of what people consider enough will range from what you have for the project you're working on to what looks like a quilt store in their house. Uh, that range and everything in between is totally acceptable. Whatever you are doing for yourself is totally acceptable. There is no uh, national average uh, or you know anything that you says you have to have this. So you have to look at your work style. That, pretty much that's it. Some people love to collect fabric that basically is their hobby. Their hobby is collecting fabric. They make a few quilts now and then, but their hobby is co to collect fabric. Um, some people only make what they're working on. They really don't buy for the future. Um, the stores are always there. There's always something pretty. You, you know, unless it's something you, unique that you're collecting a particular style or color, you could just basically buy for your project and be done. And then buy for the next project and then be done with it. 
I mean, I know people don't even keep any of the extras from them. They give them to friends and off they go. They just do one project at a time. They're kind of the unicorns though. That's, you know, most people are somewhere a little bit more than that. Most of us will have some fabric uh, collected because we just love it and we can't leave it in the store. Um, we may never use it. We just know that we own it and that makes us happy. Uh, some people will have several projects at a time. So there really isn't, it, the answer is you. What do you want? You don't have to have a huge collection of fabric. There's no requirement to have that. So just do what works for you. Do what works for your budget. Do what works for your space uh, and your work style, which is really, really key. Because if you're pumping through a lot of projects uh, and you may want to have some fabric on hand so that you don't always have to go to the store to get it or to work. Like if you like to work late at night, you know, 2 a.m., you know, you want to have stuff on hand. So look at your own work style and see what you have going on. Hope that helps. Uh, others of you, please chime in in the comments. Please go down there and give your experiences of how you feel about collecting your fabric, what you do. I mean, it'd be lovely to, to have everybody share so that people can see there is a wide range. And I have one other thing I want to read because it was a comment that I thought was absolutely wonderful comment. I read a lot of the comments uh, and this one I thought will help people who have scraps and really don't want to keep them. You know, when you're done with a project, you have stuff. Like for me, when I'm done with this project, I still have fabric. I have some fabric in here and I'm not going to make another quilt with this, with this fabric. And some of that is too unique you know, I'm not going to keep it. So it will go off to be used by the charity groups that are local here that I'm working with. But I loved how a uh, sunflower baby said this. <laughs> this is a comment in the comments here at YouTube. For a long time, I saved all my scraps. Then 10 years later, I was on a clearing binge. So many Ziploc bags of scraps. There was a realization I haven't touched them yet and I never would. I've been there. How many of you have been there? You've saved them, saved them, and then you're like, I'm just not using them. They're taking up space that could be used for things I am doing. There was a notice in her guild newsletter that a member with limited funds was requesting any scraps. The tinier, the better. She created mind-blowing miniature quilts. The log cabins were less than an inch. I asked her if she would like mine. A couple months later, she showed me the quilts she created with them. A miniature pineapple quilt and a miniature log cabin. So teeny tiny, I told her that she had to enter them in the quilt show. She said she couldn't afford the entry fee. So I paid for them to be entered and she won first place ribbons. <gasps> that gives me all the feels. I've got like goosebumps even reading this to you. Uh, she felt validated and I felt happy that my scraps could bring her joy. So if you don't want your scraps, gift them to somebody who would love them. You never know how it can affect somebody. I really want to thank you, Sunflower Baby, for sharing that story. I think it's a powerful story of how what one person doesn't use, it doesn't speak to us, speaks volumes to somebody else. And I also think it's such a wonderful example how we can help our fellow quilters not only by sharing, but also then by going that extra step and paying an entry fee for somebody who can't afford it to show them the experience of displaying their art and then winning a ribbon. Oh my goodness. Well, my friend, this has been just, you know, so much fun to share today, just kind of going through everything. Please leave some comments about uh, how you handle your fabrics and if you want to tell me where you are on your projects for January <laughs> I'd love to hear it. So Holiday homies borders on I'm excited. I love you Mwah. See you online <laughs>